So these are moments that before I had YouTube, before I understood the essence of talking out thought, I would have had my notebook and my pen and I would be writing and I would be scribbling and I'll be scribbling, I'll be writing. And I'll be Googling and trying to find out information because this is a midnight-ish hour um, and have had the, I was going to say the joy because I'm trying to keep this positive and upbeat and um, I've had the truth of such an emotional roller coaster that unfortunately I know is needed in life. Um, we try to be stronger than our moments. Oh, the tears are coming. We try to be stronger than our past. And um, the way people deal with their past, present, or even problems says a lot about who they become. So I think that's one thing that we spend this time trying to figure out how to heal. Um, because we're constantly looking to be better than what caused us our pain. We're constantly looking at who am I after the healing? And my first question is, without saying it in such a evil way, is not about how to heal. It's, are you dedicated to healing? And that's not the best way to say it, but what I'm trying to really say is that there's never going to be a 100% you 100% of the time. I think that's almost impossible. I think that's you going hard in the paint for so long. It's, it's just like saying um, Jordan or LeBron, even Kobe, um, is always on all of the time. And they had bad games. They had bad games. They had bad days. They had moments of imperfection. They had moments of confusion, moments of missed shots. Um, and that's what life is. Life is, like I said, these moments. And so when we talk about the pain, ooh, because I'm still going through it, the pain of the past, those things that you were can creep up and make you rethink the person you are now. <sighs> You have to have time, I think, to understand it. Because once again, a lot of people are just like, oh, ignore it, let it walk away or whatever else like that. And sometimes you can, and sometimes you're like, no, nah, I got to deal with this. Because um, I alluded to in my last video, you don't want the pookies of the past to come up and become problematic. And um, if we don't take care and understand our truths, um, or in my case, like I know that if I don't take time to pause and breathe, I will try to gloss over it. And there will be emotions stirred up and hurt that's stirred up. And while I look good on the outside, the mask is crumbling on the inside. And I won't even say the mask is crumbling. I'm going to say the soul is weakening and it cannot carry the mask. And those things are major. So what I have had to revisit or go through is st strong. And I'm talking to you because it's so easy for us to have those surface conversations. It's so easy for me to see who you are when you present yourself. Um, and it's so easy when we talk about goals and dreams and always talking about the biggest and the best. Um, the tears, the rips, the brokenness that got you to where you are matter too. 
And it truly matters on how you handle those situations. And what I want to talk to you today is um, probably going to be the title of my poem if I write it down. I get so busy and I miss my words, but it's the beauty of the mosaic. Even though I Googled it and I don't think mosaic is the correct term, I'm using it. So bump y'all. Um, we have these moments that carry us through life. We have these images, we have these hopes, we have these dreams, we have these conversations, we have these emotions. And our emotions can work as if they are glass bottles. And within these glass bottles, they are created to hold. That is what glass in this case is done, is created to hold, is created to house, is created to keep. But sometimes what goes in the bottle may not be good. It may not be nourishing. It could be poisoned water. It could be spoiled milk. It could be concentrated juice. It could be all these things. So then I go back to with the emotions that you have. You can have pride. You could have promise. You can have hope. And that's where my heart is hiking now. Um, and for whatever reason, in different spaces of your life that these bottles, um, they can break. There can be too much of an emotion. There can be um, not enough and it's shallow. Um, but I look at this as broken glass. So who are you when someone breaks the glass? If someone comes into your heart-filled hope and you bring them a full glass and they take it and shatter it against the wall. Who are you when you give your glass to someone and they hold it in their hands and they drop it? Um, if you ever read, um, what is it? Uh, it's like the, it's not the four of languages. It's, it's like how to love. And one of the things, I know the book when I see it, um, that he talks about is that um, happiness is your responsibility. And um, what he actually says is that it's like the moment that people are trying hard to sum it up and bring up their happiness. And like when you have something in your hands and you hold it and you're like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. Look at this light. Like, I love this light. This is gorgeous. Um, and it brings me joy. And then you meet a partner and you're saying, okay, look at this light that I have. Look at how beautiful and bright it is. I want you to have the responsibility of holding it. And that's where he's like, that's our biggest mistake. It is not somebody else's responsibility to hold your happiness. It's your responsibility to hold your happiness. And uh, your person or your partner gets to partake in the joy of your happiness, but you take care of it and you honor it. So um, it takes a lot to learn how to do that. So I go back to the broken glass that you've given your glass of happiness and you're like, God, look how robust it is. Look at, look at the aura, look at the green light of the chakra that is within and look how it jumps and it, it films and it's all this inside. Um, why don't you hold it? And they hold it and they enjoy it. And then they freaking drop it. And it's shattered and the light is everywhere. You can't gather it for yourself and it's just running around. So what happens to the broken glass? And um, we are all, we are all composites of broken glass. We all have shards and sharpness that cuts and causes to bleed. And I think that this is critical when you talk about people too who um, feel pleasure with cuts, you know, like that's the only way they feel whole because they start cutting because the pain of the glass is so deep 
and emotionally we want to associate a physical pain with it um emotionally when we go through some things we have to have a change we have to have something because we don't know how to encapture what's on the inside and god has not given us the ability to enunciate our craziness our brokenness our bits and pieces so you have all this shard around you that's supposed to come together and be whole and the work that we do when we talk about healing is the work of sweeping up the glasses. Um, some people go and they say, bump the broken glass, I'm going to find new glass and I am going to take better care of this new glass. And they sometimes don't learn the lesson and it might get broken again and then they start building pounds and mounds of glass and broken glass. Um, some people, sweep up the glass and they are determined to make it a bottle again and they are determined to make it function how it used to function um they are determined to go back and relive what they used to be and not recognize that because the glass is broken it will never be the same um and i pause again here because i heard a wonderful conversation a long time ago when we talk about our greats and how we lost some of our greats, Whitney Houston or Michael Jackson, and we lost them because they were chasing after, I would say new glass, um, they were not new glass, they were chasing after, in this case of my analogy, um, rebuilding um, broken glass. They wanted to outdo their greatest moments. They wanted to prove that they were still phenomenal they were still these things and they started running so harshly towards new goals instead of recognizing and being so proud of the goals that they've already accomplished and being proud of being number one in 88 or 87 maybe 94 um and so when it was time for them to create new music or new things they could go in with the pride and just do something that they loved. They've already done them. They've already, um, and I hate saying this is so cruel, like they've already made Mariah Carey. And what I say about Mariah Carey is that y'all know Mariah's Carey new music be like, you know, we love Mariah Carey from them old notes from Vision and Love. We love Mariah Carey from We Belong Together. And Mariah Carey is still trying to constantly reinvent herself. However, she knows she is the top dog because of what she did because all I want for Christmas is still going and she be posting plaques like she released all I want for Christmas like yesterday and so what I'm saying is is that it, that's fine like what you have done is sufficient enough it came from your hands so what happens is people don't do what I'm about to say with the glass. They're going back and trying to reposition their old glass and fill it back up again. It's the same equivalent when you have like that old school person. I'm going, I'm going to bring it back to you one time. You know what I'm saying? I'm going, to, I'm going to show you how it's supposed to be. No, there's a reason why it's not like that anymore. Now we can go ahead and relish in something that makes us feel good and old or old schoolish, but in the same essence. Time for the new glass. So we have people who decide to try to find new glass bottles and never clean up the broken ones on the end. We have people who are trying to take the glass bottles and piece them back together so they can be what they used to be. And then we have um, people who pull the glass together and um, decide to make something of it. And so, we almost get to the beauty of the mosaic. I hope you get where I'm going to with this one. But let me tell you, I'll tell you, yeah, let me tell you that. So the beauty of the mosaic, the mosaic is a piece of art. Um, if you're not too familiar with it, if you go into Baptist churches, they always got the glass um, windows of God, you know, and um, even the genocide has these beautiful mosaic glass pieces um, put together in certain areas um, to help show um, what the genocide was and what we can go from here. Um, but the mosaic is, I actually made up 
of broken tile or broken pieces, but there is mosaics that are made of art. I mean, art of um, glass. The actual use of glass is called like it's cutlery or something like that. It just doesn't sound as pretty as the word mosaic, but I want you to know that. Um, so somebody comes in and they look at this broken glass in different shapes, different sizes, different colors. And instead of trying to take it apart and figure out each purpose of each glass, so I say each emotion or each moment so they can rebuild it, they start looking at it as a whole. And they start seeing how, while maybe this glass over here was a blue glass and it's shaped a certain way, there's a red glass that fits it in a you can different way and maybe there's two pieces of glass and so they sit back and they start saying that this can be something beautiful and most times when anybody looks at an art piece or a mosaic it takes a person to be a visionary to be able to see how to take all these little pieces and put them together to create something beautiful and that is what I believe we are. I believe that we are in the process of taking what we've seen that's broken inside of us and learning how to move and adjust and still be careful because it's still glasses and shard and it can cut and it can hurt and it can have, you know, those little splinters of glass that get into your hands and it's dangerous. Like you have to be 100% careful but the art that is created is much more beautiful than the glasses that held the emotions in the first place. So beautiful is the mosaic that brought me to you. Beautiful is the moments while you may see them as broken and unuseful. Um, there's beauty in what's broken but your brokenness can be a boundary. And so the work that we do is finding the mosaic. The work that we do is putting pieces back together, not so it can be what it was, not that it's so it can be whole, it's so it can be an, an, a new. And even when you have this beautiful mosaic, it's still fragile. It's still careful. It's just recreated. And it must be looked at in such a new and different way. Now, I wanted to kind of put a pause into the mosaic because I can tell you that now, also, especially if you're out in Rwanda or, or in other countries, what you see many times in order for people to provide security, um, they take broken bottles and they flip them to where the shards are exposed. And so in doing that, you now have created a weapon. And this weapon is so sharp, it keeps people outside. It cuts, it stings, it provides and builds trauma. It, um, it's dangerous, it's simply dangerous. And uh, one of the things that we can recognize now that I tell you this is that you could also build a weapon with your broken glass. You can build so much. So the responsibility of healing, the responsibility of your health and your help with you comes with understanding that you are none of these moments. You are beautiful in brokenness as long as you continue to see the mosaic, which is the artwork that you can create by being you. And it takes work because for anybody who's ever tried, and trust me, I have tried to do a mosaic. Oh my God. God, it takes so much time. It takes so much care. It takes so much gentleness. Um, but the end results are definitely worth it. It's worth taking that time. It's worth taking 
all of that. But by you forgetting how beautiful you are, by you forgetting the beauty in your journey, by you forgetting the beauty in your purpose, it's so easy to flip one of those glass pieces around and become a weapon, a weapon against somebody else, or worse yet, a weapon against yourself. Humans are made to bleed. Because sometimes even that is a release. And sometimes asking for pain makes you feel like that's the only way to be heard. Sometimes we numb it with substances. Sometimes we simply lie to ourselves. But we must learn in our own moments and in our own ways, how beautiful we can be, can. In our brokenness. And what can happen is when you look at a mosaic, you may only see the broken shards and somebody else might actually see the beauty of the art. So the mosaic is actually a masterpiece. At one point in time, it could have been called a miracle because glass is never supposed to work again, right? When a glass breaks, we tend to throw it away because it's no longer there in its original capacity. Um, but to come in and to repurpose the glass, that's the magic. So that's Jay Essence. That's this moment. Um, that's the, I was trying to give you another M, you know me in this alliteration. I was trying to get you. That's the such and such, such and such, but I wasn't, I wasn't getting there. So um, that's what it is. I can be 100% wrong. I can be rambling and mumbling in the midst of a midnight hour. Or I can sit there and be truthful on their shattered glass um around and i'm doing the work to find the beauty in the mosaic and i know that it's there and that's the work i think that no matter what in life if we're up or down that we have to get quiet enough to see the bigger vision and find the masterpiece in the mosaic and inside of our lives and say that we can put pieces together. We can discard or place in different places those pieces that are so dark within us that they don't serve us. Um, but they did make you and you don't have to ignore and I don't want to say the burnt edges because like that's not Mark, but you know what I'm saying? You don't have to ignore the burnt edges. You place them in places where your burntness, your, 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 your detrimental spaces are surrounded by other things that can support what it can be, which is the masterpiece and not the weapon of destruction, not just for others, but for self mostly for self. Don't destroy yourself. Don't create shards to shred who you are. Um, because you are so simply beautiful, even in this placement on earth, even if you don't know your position or understanding, it doesn't make you less beautiful. It doesn't mean that the masterpiece isn't there. It just means that it hasn't been discovered yet. You'll discover it. Everybody will.
in fact, you'll recognize that there's not a masterpiece within inside you. There are multiple masterpieces, all built at different times and different places and different reasons. And sometimes, yeah, a masterpiece might get cracked, it might get broken, so it has to be repurposed. But once you have that skill, and I think that goes back to where I was talking about healing, once you have that skill, you know how to. And please allow people the space to go back and visit their brokenness, just not to linger in it. Um, because sometimes we have to go back and repurpose the work. Because if not, and y'all know that, what happens to a cracked glass that doesn't get um, the attention it needs? What happens to a cracked window shield that doesn't get changed? It starts growing. It starts creating new webs and weaknesses that can get demonished by a single tap. And the last thing you need is glass in your mouth. Glass in your mouth. Glass in your mouth. Okay, that is so not possible. Positive. But um, that's it. So that's um, the space. I kind of love the fact that I have 150 followers. I don't think I would have ever posted this um, with 3,000 followers. I don't know if I would post it now because it's so true. Um, but I hope that me sharing the foundations of my poetry, because that's what this is, um, gives you a space in your world or moment to understand yourself because I was gonna say cheer for yourself Mark. we're not there we're not quite there I don't want to lie and be like oh yeah you got it like dude we're trying that's and that's the strongest thing you can do that's the miracle of everything is just to try you don't always have to get there it's like running the marathon or trying to go to the Olympics you have to do the work in order to be able to stand up in that zone to compete or just stand like the fact of um, you're a conqueror by standing up and being there. You don't always have to be the champion. You have to be the champion in your own story. You just have to win your own battles, not everybody else's. So that's my midnighty. I can tell I got it out because I'm getting sleepy where I was anxious before. Um, And for me um, to be transparent in this, because everybody's like, oh, J Essence is so positive. J Essence is this, J Essence is that. Um, it's the fight for hope. That's it. I'm fighting for hope. That's my mosaic. All right, I hit you.